Welcome to the first edition of Pick 6 here at the NFC North Barroom, your home for everything Bears, Lions, Packers, and Vikings related. I listed the Vikings last because, well, they're the Vikings. I would say if we were out in the street, we probably would have had a fight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was going in alphabetical order, obviously. Now, I tweeted out earlier in the week for you guys to send me your questions relating to the Packers' history, their current draft prospects, uh, the, the, the future of the franchise, anything, and you guys followed through with that. So, I want to personally thank you and fucking give a round of applause. Hey, hey yo, all of these guys. Hey, hey, hey. Now, without further ado, let's get to some questions. Now, my first question comes from Benny Slacks, one of our own, actually, here at the NFC North Bar Room. He asks... Who's the worst draft pick Ted Thompson made and why? Justin Harrell, Derek Sherrod, Brian Brom, Jarrell Worthy, Pat Lee, Kyrie Thornton, or other? Right off the bat, by a landslide, I'm going to have to go with Justin Harrell. And, Justin, I'm sorry if you're watching this. You never know how viral these videos can go. You know, I'm just saying, if there's a slight chance he's watching this somewhere out there in the wide world of social media, don't hunt me down, don't kill me. I'm sorry. Justin Harrell was by far the biggest bust in the draft Ted Thompson has made. One, he was a first round selection, 16th overall. Two, he started two games for the Packers. And three, I mean, there's there's even a YouTube video of, of a couple Packer fans reacting to that 2007 draft. With the 16th pick in the 2007 NFL draft, the Green Bay Packers select Justin Harrell, defensive tackle. <laughs> But regardless, a couple other guys on there were second round picks, one was a third rounder, and didn't have very high expectations, at least not as high of expectations as a first round pick that Justin Harrell was. I mean, he started two games for the Packers. That's enough. That's that's enough right there to just, first round pick, starting two games? No, you're done. No, no. My next question comes from Andrew on Twitter. He asked me, who should the Packers have on their draft board? Five players the Packers should have on their draft board. It's funny you ask that. Defensive tackle, Jerron Reed. Inside linebacker, Reggie Ragland. Defensive tackle, Andrew Billings. Outside linebacker slash safety hybrid, Sua Cravens. And inside linebacker, Kentrell Brothers. To me, Sua Cravens, if he does happen to fall in the second round, Hopefully, and the Packers take a defensive lineman, for example, in the first round. They might go after inside linebacker in the second. But, Sue Cravens, he is a great tackler. He takes great angles like he did at USC. And he's a very, very good football player. And his hybrid ability to drop back into coverage, being a former safety, the Packers need a coverage linebacker and a guy who can close sideline to sideline. Sue Cravens would definitely be that guy at outside linebacker. My next question comes from Richard. He wants me to rank... The five best players to ever wear a Packer uniform in order. I was kicking myself over this because I don't want to leave. I don't want to exclude guys. The Packers have just had so many great players in their illustrious history. And I know that sounds extremely biased. Mm -hmm. But hey, I speak the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. At least in my mind. Number one to me, and I'm sure a lot of other people as well, Brett Favre. He was Green Bay Packers football. Number two, Bart Starr, Reggie White, Ray Nitsky, and Donald Driver. Donald Driver, yeah, Donald Driver. Donald Driver epitomized what it meant to be a Green Bay Packer, and especially at the receiver position in a league with, you know, flashy guys at, at that position. Donald Driver got on the field, did his job, and got off, and that is why I respect him so much and why I'm so grateful that he was such a talented receiver in Green Bay for 13 seasons. That's why I would rank him at number five. When I think of the Green Bay Packers, he's definitely one of the top guys that comes to my mind. My next question comes from DJ. The realistic option for the Green Bay Packers in the first round of the draft. Now, another open-ended question that can have a variety of answers. Realistically, I don't see Reggie Ragland falling to 27. <laughs> With DJ Raji gone, that opens up a 330-plus pound gap on the defensive line that Raji formerly anchored. That opens up the door, however, for defensive tackle Andrew Billings out of Baylor. He is the realistic selection that I can see the Packers going with in the first round of the draft. It would be great if Reggie Ragland fell to 27, but I just, I truthfully, I don't see it happening. With in, the inside linebacker position being so slim in this year's draft, not much talent, but the defensive line position in this draft does run deep, and I mean deep. 
If the Packers want to pick up their guy at defensive tackle at 27, hey, Andrew Billings is the guy, and that is who I personally see going to the Packers in the first round. My fifth and final question comes from Robbie. Without Aaron Rodgers, how would the Packers do? This was something we saw in 2013 when Aaron Rodgers went down against the Bears with a broken collarbone. The Packers went 2-5-1 and one without him. To be fair, the Packers didn't really have solidity at the backup quarterback position in 2013. They had Seneca Wallace and Scott Tolzien. They, had a, they were so desperate they had to bring back Matt Flynn, who they originally drafted in 2008, just because he knew the offense. That's how desperate they were. But if Aaron Rodgers did go down again, I think they would be prepared to an extent. But also I consider Mike McCarthy one of the, the best offensive minds in football sometimes. So to answer your question, I, I do believe they, they would be okay. Not a playoff team by any means immediately right off the bat, but I mean, eventually they would get back into being one of, that, one of those dominant playoff teams that we've come to see over the last seven years. Now I know I said five questions. Sometimes I'm feeling nice. Sometimes I'm a little giving. I like to surprise people and plus uh jonathan asked me over twitter a question that i just couldn't resist from not putting in the video i had to put this in the video so i decided to tackle on a little bonus question jonathan's question was does rogers do better with or without the porn stash for those of you who aren't familiar with aaron rogers porn stash here is a picture 1970s handlebar hulk hogan brother mustache i don't know i don't I, I don't know what he was doing. Does Aaron Rodgers play better with or without this 1970s porn star mustache? It was a very good question. I had to dig extensively, look at certain dates that he had the mustache, had it shaved. I, I, I had to do a lot of research, a lot of calculating to find these statistics. Now, I want to I want to remind you all, these statistics that I am about to show you may blow your mind. I almost blew my head off just looking them up, so my mind is fried at this point. But you guys need to be careful with these statistics that I'm about to show you. A decade from now, when analysts look back on Aaron Rodgers' career, when it's all said and done, he's retired, this is the video they're going to come to to determine how good he was with or without the mustache. You know, it's what could have been. Should he have kept the mustache and he would have been playing great? Should he have shaved it sooner and he probably would have won more rings? This is what they're going to come back to. This is the moment. Show the stats! <laughs> Really? Oh, oh, uh, all right. Well, uh, I hope that answers your question. That um, wow. Uh, okay. Thank you, Jonathan, for the question. So, from porn star handlebar mustaches to realistic first-round options for the Packers, I think it's time we wrap up the first edition of Pick Six here at the NFC North Bar Room. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I want to thank you all for, for participating, sending me your questions and I'll look to do it again in a week. So I'll ask you guys for more questions shortly and uh, we'll get right back to this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.